One of the first projects that attracts many people to get started in woodworking is making a cutting board or serving board. It's a great first project because making one doesn't require a lot of tools or experience. There are endless design options. It's a project that's both functional and decorative. They make great gifts. And if you're looking for a little side income, they sell great at craft shows. Hey, quick pro tip here. You can charge an extra $50 if you label them as charcuterie boards instead of cutting boards. So it's no wonder that making cutting boards is popular with both beginning woodworkers and experienced woodworkers. Today, I'm gonna to show you the basics of making a cutting board. Let's get to it. The easiest way to make a cutting board is to simply sand a solid piece of wood smooth and apply a food safe finish. This is a great option if you've got a piece of wood that's got beautiful grain or interesting colors. But the potential problem is solid pieces of wood may cup or warp over time. So if you choose to make a cutting board out of a solid piece of wood, we recommend you use kiln dried hardwood. That will help prevent warping. But today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a cutting board out of strips of wood. The advantage of this method is when you use multiple strips of wood, the board has much less chance of warping or cupping. Plus, you get the creative opportunity to mix and match different colors or species of wood. Now, let's make a cutting board. The first step is to choose the wood you're gonna use. We do not recommend using softwoods because the knives can easily damage them. We recommend hardwoods with a tight or closed grain, such as walnut, maple, cherry, or beech. You can also choose from several exotic hardwoods, such as purple heart or zebra wood, to add unique colors and patterns to your cutting board. Whatever wood you choose, it's critical that the edges are flat, smooth, and perpendicular to the face. Now you can cut your own strips if you have the tools. The advantage to that is you can cut them any width you like, and you can use up scraps if you have them. But if you don't have the tools to cut your own stock, you can also purchase pre-cut wood strips. Rockler sells cutting board stock in a variety of species, in different lengths, widths, and thicknesses. They're available online and in some of our retail stores. You can purchase strips individually to create a custom design or as a pre-selected cutting board kit. Today I'm going to go with this classic combination of American hardwoods, including walnut, maple, and cherry. Now let's go over the other materials I need to make this cutting board. You'll need some clamps to squeeze all the wood together while the glue cures. Now the clamps need to be long enough to fit all the wood strips. So clamps with a max capacity of say 16 to 24 inches is a pretty good length to handle most cutting boards. Bar, pipe, or F-style clamps are best for gluing up cutting boards or other panels because they apply the necessary force to fully close together the multiple glue joints. Today, I'll be using these special Rockler Mini Deluxe Panel Clamps. They can clamp panels up to 16 and a half inches wide. These clamps not only apply force across the joint, they also apply force from the top and bottom to keep the panel flat. These Deluxe Panel Clamps are also available in a larger version for clamping panels up to 36 inches wide. These panel clamps reminded me of another benefit of this project. A cutting board is essentially a small panel. Once you understand how to make a cutting board, you can use the same process to make larger panels for things like tabletops, cabinet sides, or doors. Next, let's move on to the glue. Cutting boards get wet, so you're gonna want a waterproof glue like this Type Bond 3, and you're gonna wanna protect your work surface from glue squeeze out and to make cleanup easier. You can use plastic, cardboard, or newspaper, but I like to use these silicone project mats because the dried glue peels right off. Now let's make my cutting board. Whenever I do a project that involves glue, I start with a dry run. I put all the parts together and clamp them up without glue. Just to be sure the parts are all facing the right direction, it all fits like it should, and I don't have any surprises when I've got wet glue on all the joints. It's also important that you position the clamps so that you have even pressure all the way across the cutting board. When making cutting boards that are around 16 inches wide or less, that means spacing the clamps roughly eight to 10 inches apart. One way to help determine the spacing is to imagine two 45 degree lines extending out from each clamp face. The lines should intersect with the lines from the next clamp 
roughly in the middle of the cutting board. This looks great, so now I'm ready to apply the glue and clamp it up for real. Back off the clamp pressure, and in this case, I also have to remove the top bars on these panel clamps. I remove the strips, being careful to keep them in order. Then I apply a piece of painter's tape to the faces of the top and bottom bars. This will help keep any glue drips off the clamps. Next, I place the strips back on the clamps and flip them on edge in the same direction. Then apply a thin layer of glue to the edges. I applied a bead with the glue bottle and then used a silicone brush to spread the glue. Flip the strips back in place, line up the edges flush, and then replace the top bar. I tighten the clamps until I can see a little bit of glue squeeze out along all of the joints. Like most woodworking techniques, when it comes to dealing with glue squeeze out, there are lots of opinions. Some people like to take a wet rag and right away wipe up all the wet glue. Other people like to wait 10 or 15 minutes until the glue is partially dry and a little rubbery and then scrape up what they can. And other people will just leave it like this, let it fully dry, and then scrape and sand at the very end. Personally, I usually combine the last two methods and try to cut most of it off when it's partially dry and a little rubbery. Then I wait until it's completely dry and then scrape and sand off whatever's left. I let the glue cure for a couple hours, then I took the board out of the clamps. Then I used a random orbit sander to remove any remaining dried glue and smooth any uneven seams. I started with 100 grit and then I worked my way up through 150 and 220. At this point, you could apply a few coats of butcher block oil, cutting board oil, or any other food safe finish, attach some rubber feet, and call it done. And you'd have a beautiful cutting board. Or you could continue to add more details. Now there are way too many creative options to cover in this video, but I'll show you a couple that you might want to try. First, you could router an edge profile either on the top or bottom edges to add extra detail or to make it easier to pick up. Another popular addition is to add a handle. Now you could either do a handle like this where you cut it away and it sticks out, or you could do an interior handle where you cut out an opening. Now you can design your own handle and cut it out with a jigsaw or a bandsaw, or an even easier way is to use one of our handle templates. Just secure the template to the board with tape or clamps and use a router set up with a guide bushing and spiral upcut bit to cut around the template. So there you have it, the basics of making a cutting board. I hope you've learned that it's a project that even a beginner can tackle and it offers nearly endless creative options. I'm Dan Carey with Rockler and Woodworkers Journal. Thanks for watching.